can all be seated. Thank you. Good to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Amen. Good to see your sweet, warm, smiling faces. If you love Jesus, say amen. 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 All right. Uh, we are going to be having our prayer song, but before we have the prayer song and the prayer, we uh, do want to ask, are there any special unspoken requests? And so I don't want you to mention them. I just want you to raise your hand, and I know the Holy Spirit can look down. If you get your hand up to Jesus, if you have something that you want God to touch your heart or life with, I know he's going to look down because we want to uh, keep the church going in an orderly progression. We don't want to take too much time with each aspect, but God cares and he loves for each and every one of you. So we just want you to know how much that God does indeed love you and how glad we are that you're all here with us today. Father, we come before your throne of grace this morning. We're all sinners saved by grace, and we are so thankful, Father, that you sent your son Jesus to this world. And we're thankful that he came to this world and died a sacrificial death, a substitutional death as well, where we now don't have to die, but we can live living and trusting in Jesus. We know that we have read and promises that if we believe in Jesus, that uh, we don't have to worry about death because our faith is not resting in our goodness, but in your goodness. So thank you, Father, for your love and your patience with us as your children. Lord, you saw the hands of the many prayer requests that got lifted this morning. Lord, we pray a special blessing and you would fulfill the needs of each person in you uh, have been petitioned with in the thought prayers that went up at that time. So we just ask, Father, that you would guide and direct in this service. Help us, Lord, to love you and to serve you throughout our entire life. We pray a special blessing on Brian this morning. We know, Lord, that uh, both Brian and the other elders are uh, looking forward to an opportunity to share the gospel with the many people that have been coming. So we're thankful, Lord, that you sent people to know what the true word of God says this morning. Open their hearts and their minds and open up the uh, heart of uh, Brian and may he say words that have been sent directly to his mind from you. So guide and direct us. We're thankful for the power of the Holy Spirit to convict us to want us to do what we need to do. So Father, we thank you for all of the times that you have interceded in our behalf. So we just ask, Father, that you would be with all the sick and the maimed, and with friends or loved ones that may be traveling at this time. And for all the ones that are inside the doors of this church, may we all be blessed with you, Father, and receive a blessing from being here. This is your house today. We do ask these things in the lovely and precious name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Sabbath, everyone. For our scripture reading, let's open our Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16 to 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, correcting faults, and giving instruction for right living, so that the person who serves God may be fully qualified and equipped to every kind of good deed. I want to share with uh, you this morning something that I am very passionate about and something that this church is very passionate about, and that is our school, Noah School. This evening, and you know, when I think of Noah, Caleb, I appreciate that when you are asked to serve the seriousness that you take in this. I mean, is there a finer dressed young man in this church than Caleb? It is refreshing to see young people that are willing to stand up for the Lord and serve. And I thank you, and Emmy, thank you too. Saw you sing last week. That was very, very nice. We have a lot of talented young people. This evening, once a month up at NOAA, we invite all the constituent churches, which Elyria is a part of, to join them in Vespers. That is going to be this evening at 5 o'clock. Next month is going to be a very special Vespers for Elyria because we are sponsoring the Vespers service for next month. And that is going to be February 4th. So we're going to be calling upon the members to put together a good Vespers service for the school. 
and it is a great time. Our Christmas program, if you did not get a chance to go to our Christmas program, you really missed out. It was an exceptional program, and God's people turned out. That gym was packed, and it was, it was a great event. So this tonight at 5 p.m., at Noah's school. What a wonderful way to close out the Sabbath with our young people. How many people here had a good Christmas? Amen. Amen. Was it all you hoped for, wished for? Yes. Too much snow. Too much snow. Mine, honestly, was a disappointment. Anybody here ever have a disappointing Christmas? We had been planning this Christmas all year long. My children are all in the medical field, so one year we get them for Thanksgiving, and then this year we were supposed to get them for Christmas. So we spent the better part of six months repainting our house. We got the Christmas tree. We got stockings for each one of the kids. We were ready. Then come Thursday before Christmas, what happened? We got an incredible, well, I wanted snow. Well, that was, uh, Lord, I want snow for Christmas because all my kids live in the South and they all wanted snow. And we wanted to show off a white Christmas in Ohio. Well, Thursday, all the airlines had canceled out except for my middle son. He lived in Dallas and he got a straight shot right into Cleveland. So we only got one of our three children to show up for Christmas. So it was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, but the nice thing about living in 2023 is we have this little phone. So Christmas Eve, we connected on phone. And we I think we spent about three hours on the phone. We went through the Christmas story. And then we went through you know, everybody, um, what they liked about this year and what was a blessing. We actually added a member to our family this year. My son-in-law, Addison Clark, married my daughter in April, and that was the highlight of the year, I know, for Sherry and I. But while we were there, I challenged my family. I'm going to challenge my church family this morning. You know, when we started having children, we started dedicating them to the Lord, and it has always been Sherry and my desire and prayer that on resurrection morning, that my family all walks on the streets of gold with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I put that challenge out to each and every one that this year, that they will spend time in prayer and in study so that we can spend eternity as a family. And what a Christmas present that would be for my wife and I to all be in heaven together. So when I was asked to preach this morning, I uh, continued with that theme. I'm going to go over something real quick. The sermon, the title of my sermon is My Owner's Manual. How many here like cars? I love cars. If I had a bigger driveway, I would have more cars. My wife's like, you cannot get any more cars till you get rid of some of the ones you have. One of the beauties of a car is, where do they keep the owner's manual in a car? The glove compartment. Anybody here like reading owner's manuals? Maybe I'm weird. I love reading the owner's manual. Cars are so complex nowadays that when you get in a new modern car, am I the only one that has problems doing the simplest things like turning on the radio, turning off the radio? You know, it, cars are complex. There is an owner's manual nowadays that tell you everything there is to know about today's cars. So, do human beings have a owner's manual? With that being said, let's go into prayer real quick, and we will present this topic. Dear Heavenly Father, as we just finished up Christmas and New Year's, Lord, as we get ready to go into this new year, Lord, it is my prayer and hope that each and every one of us will spend time with you this year to build a relationship that is so unbreakable, Lord, that no matter what 2023 
brings us in our lives, Lord, we will follow you. May your Holy Spirit be upon this church this morning, and may he influence my words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How many people here know that human beings have an owner's manual? And how many people know what that owner's manual is? The Bible, right? Now, I've shared this before. I love acronyms. When I was a little kid, now I didn't grow up Adventist, so I don't know what little Adventist kids are taught, but I'm sure they had the same songs that I had. How many here know the B-I-B-L-E song? How many people here are going to sing with me? I don't want to sing it by myself, but I will. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Well, thank you for joining me. I love these songs. The Bible. The Bible. Do you know that we are the only one of God's created worlds that have the Bible. And why do we have a Bible? And other worlds do not. Anybody know? Ah, repeat that again. They're not fallen. They're not fallen. So, are we fallen? We are fallen, right? What are one of the consequences of being a fallen people? Death. Separation. All these things that sin has created. Do we have hope? I'm not a very old guy, but I have noticed that most of the things that were considered reliable when I was in school now don't seem to be so reliable. Now, when I was growing up, science had an answer for everything, right? Can you believe when I was in seventh grade, my teacher had the audacity to tell me that I came from an ape? I didn't agree with that, and I was sent to the principal's office because I was, I was not very kind in my response to that. Science also said that we were a Big Bang Theory. Never could figure that out. What science says was the origin of life. Fast forward to 2023, what are people being taught about humanity, period, nowadays? There is so much confusion. Now, when I was growing up, not too many years ago, there was a man and there was a woman. Fast forward to 2023, I can't keep up with the origin or what the world is talking about. Do you desire to have truth? Amen. Truth that will never, ever change. Well, you are in the right place this morning. The Bible is an incredible book. How much of the Bible is directly written by God? Written by God. So God wrote the Bible. Ah, so the Bible was a combination of what? Inspiration. So, did fallen man have a part in writing the Bible? Through what? Through what agency? The Holy Spirit. Isn't that incredible? That God, even though man has sinned, man is responsible for, the, for disobeying God. God has allowed man to play a part in salvation, right? He let man, in, his infinite, in God's infinite wisdom... Who has God put in the responsibility of sharing the gospel? 
fallen man. Does that tell you something about God? That God has not abandoned man. I hope you have your Bibles ready because we are going to talk about the Bible this morning. And I think if we're going to start out with a study of the Bible, let's go to 2 Timothy and let's talk about the authenticity of the Bible. 2 Timothy. And Rolando, thank you for doing scripture reading this morning. I think if we're going to start out with a Bible study or talking about the Bible, we need to start out in this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. All scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Is that good news? Is it, is, it, is it as relevant today in 2023 as it was thousands of years ago when it came from the pen of inspired writers? All right, 17 says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. How many people here want to be complete in God? Well, you're at the right place, and we have the right instruction manual this morning. I'd like for you to turn with me. We're going to go through rapidly through a few different verses throughout the Bible. If you uh, have your Bible, let's go to Isaiah 8.20. Isaiah 8.20. Isaiah 8.20. All right, Isaiah 8.20 says, To the law and to the testimonies, if they do not speak according to the word, it is because there is no light in them. Is there confusion in today's world? Is there confusion in Christianity? As I've shared with you, I did not grow up Seventh-day Adventist, and there were a lot of things that I was taught as a young man that caused confusion. And the one that confused me the most, well, actually two things that confused me the most was, if we serve a loving God, I was taught that if you didn't follow Christ, you were going to burn in hell for eternity. And I had a grandfather when I was 10 years old who died and as far as I know, had never been in church a day in his life. And the thought that my grandfather was burning in hell forever and for eternity brought great confusion. How could a God that loves humanity and died on the cross for them burn somebody for eternity? And that brought a lot of confusion. And another one was the rapture. I didn't understand. I remember being in Sunday school. I was probably about 10 years old. And it didn't make sense that if when you die, you go directly from heaven to hell. Okay, that's got the dead taken care of. And the living are going to be raptured to heaven. Then what exactly is Jesus Christ coming back to Take back to heaven. I was very confused about that. Thankfully, God did not leave me there. Those questions were answered later on in life through a wonderful thing called a Revelation Seminar. Let's go to Proverbs real quick. Am I the only person here? How many here ever watched the original Mickey Mouse Club? Does anybody here, am I the only person, because I, I ask this question all the time, the guy who was the main character of the Mickey Mouse Club, the adult that had all the little kids around, he used to have a guitar and he'd sing songs all the time. Well, he used to sing a song about Proverbs. Anybody remember that? Proverbs, Proverbs, they're so true. Proverbs, tell us what to do. Proverbs, help us all to be better. Mouseketeers, does anybody remember that? I don't know why I remember that, but I remember that. That was such a catchy song. Yeah, that was on, you know, the Mickey Mouse Club now. I think they've strayed from that message. Proverbs. All right, let's see what Proverbs have to say. Is Proverbs a book of wisdom? 
Boy, is it ever. All right, so Proverbs. All right. What did I say? Proverbs. Chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6. All right. Proverbs 30, 5 and 6 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Is there a lot of confusion when I was studying this lesson, they said there are over 30,000 groups of denomination and worship that use the Bible as a reference. 30,000 different beliefs. So one could maybe say that the Bible sometimes could be a book of confusion. Now... Does anybody care what my opinion is this morning, or do you, are you concerned about what God says? Amen. I hope that you are concerned about what God says, because you're not going to get much of my opinion this morning, because the world, and in my opinion, could care less about opinion. The world in 2023 needs to know what the Bible says, comparing Scripture with Scripture, and that we should test everything. Don't take it for granted that people that up here in this podium are teaching you the truth. I prepared this morning, and I am going to use the Bible and let the Bible interpret itself. All right? Psalms 119, uh, 105. Psalms 119, 105. Uh, this is a... Beautiful, beautiful text. Psalms 119, verse 105. Do we live in a dark world, family? Is there darkness everywhere? It seems to be getting darker by the moment. And I think one reason is, is we're all connected, right? The world has become a very, very small place, and we are all connected. So, I love the fact that the Bible is the same today as it was yesterday. It never changes, so it is dependable. All right, Psalms 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In this dark world, the Bible can bring light and can bring order into this chaotic world. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 20. All right. And it says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man. Is that comforting to know? Is man um, dependable? Right, we have opinions that are numerous. Ah, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, the amazing thing about it is the Bible is written over a span of what? Three, four thousand years? Things that were written generations, thousands of years before by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is the same, coincides with the same things written in the New Testament thousands of years later, right? So when you're doing a study over this long span of time, it is the same message over and over. In the Bible, it just fits, right? All right, so one last one, Hebrews 4. 12, Hebrews 4.12. 
Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, the joints and marrows, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. In 2023, does God's holy word still change lives? Is it still calling people back to God? This is the most sold book every year. Every year. I bet if you were to ask in the United States, probably every home has a Bible. The question is, is how many people are taking time to go through God's word. Is there a lot of confusion being taught in today's world? You know, a hundred years ago in the public schools throughout the United States that the Bible was taught in school? I don't know when this happened. Even when I was a child, we still did the Pledge of Allegiance. We still did the Golden Rules. We didn't have prayer. We did have a Christian club we could go to. But um, the fact that the Bible has been removed from society, has it had a impact on us as a people? I still believe that there are questions about humanity that only the Bible can answer. Anybody here want to know why we're even here? Why are we even here on this earth? What is the purpose of man? Why are we here and for what reason? Well, I have no faith in science answer to any of that. It changes continually. Where in our owner's manual can we find the origin of, of the earth? Where? My Bible students, where do, where do we find out where earth came from? Genesis. Genesis, right? In the beginning. That's right, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 24. Now, I'm not going to read all that, but... Copy some of this down, and this makes for good Sabbath reading. What about the origin of man? Ah, in Genesis 2, right? What makes the origin of man so special? So, we are a copy of who? Who? Of his image. Wow. What makes us different than any other created animal on this earth? What makes humans different? Choice? What else? The image of God. So we have the ability to what? Starts with an R. Reason, Reason, right? No other animal created on this earth has the power to reason. That is, uh, that's some good information, right? That's kind of important to know. What about the origin of sin? Is that important to know? Where sin started? Genesis again, what is one of the most beautiful things that comes out of the story of the fall of Adam and Eve? Any good news come out of that? That's right. The promise that's found in um, Genesis 1, or Genesis 3, 
15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And the rest of the Bible, all the way to Revelation, is a love letter between God and fallen man promising us that he has not left us in this state, that he is coming back. God will give you as much as you give him. God is not a God that is going to kick down your door and force his will upon you. But if you seek the Lord, you earnestly seek the Lord. One of the greatest gifts that Jesus gave us when he ascended back to heaven is what? The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is available to who? Who's it available to? All right. That is a fruit of the Spirit, right? When you are a baptized believer in Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. Do we still live in a world that is full of suffering and sin? I'll be honest with you, a lot of times I come through these doors and it is not a happy Sabbath. It has been a horrible week. And I try to put on a good face, but the truth of the matter is we still live in a world where there is sin, where there is suffering, where there is heartache. What's the shortest verse in the Bible? That brings me comfort to know that my Savior weeps over humanity. He cares about the most intimate details of your life. He has not abandoned us. Where is our Heavenly Father right now? Interceding in our behalf. Have we been dealt a winning hand? Hang on, folks, to Christ. What is the one part of the Bible? Now, we talked about earlier the Bible was written by who? Men are to full of the Holy Spirit. Is there any part of the Bible that was written specifically by God? The Ten Commandments. So, it would be... I would question anybody that says that the Ten Commandments were done away with. The one part that God wrote, and in its name, the commandments, tells me that that's meant to be followed, right? What is the duty of man? Does that bring you comfort? Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy following God's commandments? Do you like structure? Do you like chaos? Yes. Pray for our police. Pray for our soldiers. Pray for the people that have to go out into this world and try to bring order in a chaotic world. They need our thoughts and prayers and our support. Same with our leaders. Same with our pastor. Our pastor needs our prayer. He is under attack continuously. Anybody that takes up the cross of Christ will be attacked. We are a family, folks. We need to get in the habit of lifting one another up. Times are only going to get harder. I don't know about you, but I, I, I consider you my family because my, my family is spread throughout the United States. So it's my wife and I. And when I come in here, I have commonality with each and every one of you. We all have the blessed hope that Jesus Christ is coming. And we need as a family, as a church family, to lift one another up in these trying times. All right, I'm going to go over this part real quick. Salvation. Is salvation promised in God's word? All right. I'm going to go through two areas this morning that talk about salvation. It's not generally thought of. Look up Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23. For we know the wages of sin are what? Death. Is death. In Romans 6.23. Thankfully, God did not leave us there. 
But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I've made a statement before, and I, I, I sure don't hope I do not come across as braggadocious when I'm talking to non Christians. How many ways are there to the kingdom? Through who? So in my thinking, either Jesus Christ is who he says he is, or he's a liar. There's only one or two. Either Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he is who he says he is, or he's a liar. Now, I firmly believe Jesus is not a liar. Not only did he put his money where his mouth is, he came down to this earth to live every part of of the separation that we experience with God. He experienced. But the power that he had with the connection with his father, the prayer, the connection that he had with his father, we have. God has held nothing back from us. We have the same Holy Spirit and connection with God that Jesus Christ had, the same promise. One more, John 6, 40. John 6, 40. And there's many more verses, but you begin to see a pattern here in John 6, 40 regarding salvation. Do we sometimes complicate the gospel and salvation? Is it man's nature to complicate something that shouldn't be complex? Do we sometimes feel God needs our help, right? Yeah, we get idle sometimes. We think, is it my job to convict anybody here of sin? So it's, none of, it's not our job to do that, right? All right. Well, let's look at John 6.40. It said, and this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Is that good news? That is great news. How many people here know John 3.16? Let's turn to that real quick. How many people here know what it says in John 3.15 and John 3.17? You know, I was taught years ago, and it really serves me well when I'm studying the Bible, a lot of times people will hang a religion on a verse, right? How many times have you ever read the verse above and below and come away with a little different perspective? So, let's go through John 3.15. Let's read this together. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. All right. That's great news, right? Now let's go into John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that who shall ever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Right? Great news. Ha ha. I think Christians should really concentrate on this next verse. And I think it would change everything about the way that we are perceived by the world, in the way that we are sometimes perceived in this very sanctuary. Has Satan surrendered ground? So when you, we've had a lot of baptisms lately, right? I don't know about how other people's experience has been, but I know Satan turned up the heat after I made a public confession to follow Jesus Christ. He didn't back off one bit. He made life Interesting. Let's go into verse 17 and let's see if we can change the perspective on how we as Christians are to treat one another in the world. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. How different would church be if we stopped condemning and pointing the finger at one another? If my heavenly father did not come down to this earth to condemn me. Who am I to condemn anybody in this world, including my church family? I have, talk about being out of line, I have no business being up 
on this pulpit this morning if I am practicing that. But that the world through him might be saved. What a revelation this would be for this church and God's people if we practice that. The condemning has no place among man. That is God's territory, not ours. And one more thing. How many people here did not grow up Seventh-day Adventist? It's pretty good. About most places I go, it's at least half the amount of people. That is good news, good news, good news. What is, I'm going to share with you two real quick things that I learned. I shared a little bit about it this morning. Why, why did God write the book of Revelation? All right, we are how many years on the other side of the cross? About 2,000 years, the other side of the cross. Is the world, I'm talking about the religious world, know Christ any better than his people, the Israelites, knew Christ when he walked this earth? Did Jesus have to point out to the Jews who his heavenly father was? Did they have the wrong picture of who he was? Even his own disciples were astonished after Jesus said three times that he was going to die on the cross and be resurrected. They still believed to the very end that he was going to set up his kingdom where? On earth. They were confused. Fast forward 2,000 years from now. What is taught in the pulpits throughout the world regarding death? That when you die, you go where? Confusion. What about hell? Burn forever and ever and ever. Confusion. What about the rapture? Is there confusion? God in his infinite wisdom knew 2,000 years after the cross that man would not have a clear picture about who he is. Thankfully, my roommate years ago, his name was Tony McKinney, turned me on to a Revelation seminar, and it changed my perception of who Jesus Christ is. He is not going to destroy man forever and ever and ever. He is coming back. When he is coming back, is it going to be a silent event? No. It's going to be a worldwide event. We are to work out. We don't get a second chance. God in his infinite wisdom, why are we here? Why are we here on this earth? To choose. Do we have a choice? We are given a choice throughout our whole life to follow God or to not. This is the, the, the big mystery to me is when God created mankind, he gave us a free will. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us a free will to serve you with our whole heart. And unfortunately, that come with a price. God know that knew that people would reject him. But that tells us a lot about his character and who he is. Three angels message. Never heard of that before in my life. Is it important? Yes. Are we in, how many people here believe we are at the very end of earth's history? Amen. This message is God's last message to this dying world. In his infinite wisdom, he gave fallen man the responsibility to share this with the world. And I could go on and on about this. I have one more thing to share with you. Anybody here have a favorite Bible verse throughout the Bible? One that you go to over and over again that gives you comfort. I hope you do. And I'm going to see if I can do this one from memory. When I was rebaptized a few years ago, here when Randy Barber was here, my favorite verse is always one that has brought me comfort because it refocuses me on where I'm going. As I share with my kids, that is my wife and I's desire for them all to be in heaven. Do we live in perilous times? Jesus told his disciples many years ago as he was preparing to go to the cross and then preparing to go to heaven. Let not your heart be troubled. 
If you believe in the Father, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And this part brings me to tears. I go to prepare a place for you and you and you and you and you and anybody that will surrender and accept me as your personal Savior. And I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again to take you home with me that where I am, you may be also. As we go into 2023, it's my prayer for each and every one of you that you will spend time daily in God's word. Since my wife and I started doing this, our marriage and our love for one another has grown tremendously. To be able to start out your day with your wife, with your children, with your family is a beautiful thing. And I pray that each and every one of you take time this year to, to do that. And as a church body that we grow closer to one another so that we can truly minister. See, we have to learn to minister here to one another before we can go out and minister to other people. See, God has probably thousands and thousands of people in Elyria and Lorain County right now that are ready for this message. The question is, are we ready to receive them? Because not everybody comes into the church looking like me. I mean, most people 30 and under don't look anything like me nowadays. I'm kind of a throwback to a, a, a different era. We have to look at people the way that Jesus Christ looks at people. And I don't know about you, but he has been very patient with me. I'm a 30-some year work in progress, and, and I still fail every day. Dear Heavenly Father, and as we approach and go into 2023, Lord, we are still in the storm. Father, there is a work that needs to be done, and there are going to be some very trying times, Lord, that is coming. But the beautiful thing is, Lord, is you are right here where you have always been. You have not left us. You have not forsaken us, Lord. You have given us the power that we need through your Holy Spirit, through your intercession in heaven in our behalf, through your Heavenly Father on the eternal throne, Lord, to make it through this stormy time. Father, you, you form this church as a support system for one another to lift one another up, Lord. I pray that we take time this year to get to know each other better, Lord so that we may minister to one another, we may pray for one another, we may lift one another up, Lord. And Lord, my prayer is that we will all walk the streets of gold with you someday. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.